about... Uh, this is a great game, actually. You look in the crowd and just the first person in chat to find Nutu King walking through. This is a great Waldo. game of I Spy. Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> like, do I see him in the crowd? He's a pretty unique caricature as well. Yeah. Well, one human will just get closer and closer <laughs> until he's already <laughs> at the player camp. Like all the way inside of it. <laughs> big brain, big plays. Um, but yeah, I was talking to Mutes King earlier today about, hey, is there anything in this bracket that you're scared of? Uh, any, anything that you fear? And he what said, do you say? No. No, no, nothing at all. Very Mewtwo King answer. But then the thing was, there was like a box of Jabali's chicken on the side. Yeah. And he was like, whose chicken is that? And we were like, I, I, don't, I know. don't know. And he was like, well, I'm hungry and, and I want food. Did he, did so he gank <laughs> some chicken? He, well, I mean, we found the person whose chicken it belonged to and he ate the chicken, but they did it in exchange for a deep personal question about his life. So they said, what is your greatest fear? And he said, burning in hell. <laughs> and we're like, okay. Jason, that was a little dark. Yeah, it was very grim. So there you have it. Mewtwo King's greatest fear is burning in hell. You heard it here first at CEO 2018 Lambo. in Daytona. I'm, I'm so glad that Mewtwo King is able to exchange <laughs> interpersonal questions for fried chicken. <laughs> Jabali's fried chicken, too. Am I, I heard it's, it's actually seasoned pretty well. Oh, okay, I, I just had Popeyes. some earlier. Oh, you had some? Okay. okay. Uh, Tell me about it. Uh, uh, it's convention priced, I'll say that much, right? It's, it's $11 for a box of chicken, but it's a good box of chicken. All right, I'm, I'm going to sell it to you guys right now. If you got money to spare, if you're hungry in the venue and you do not want to leave, buy some Jabali's fried chicken. All right, because you're lactose. It all, it all makes sense now. I can't. Yeah. There's a lot. I don't have a lot of <laughs> options, man. <laughs> yeah, We got some lasagna in the back room. I'm like, ooh, ooh. don't give me that. Like, yeah, that's definitely going to put a rip on you for the rest of the night. But here we go. looks like. <laughs> Where's uh, yeah, Jason where? Zimmerman from Cinnamon, Cinnamon Sin, New Jersey? Yeah, that's the classic, right? Yeah, we're. Mr. Uh, you know, Tech Chase. There's Juna. Juna. Yo, shout outs to Juna, by the way. Um, right? Stream runner slash, I don't know, stream runner. A stream uh, operator. Operator, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Because runner doesn't quite do the justice because that makes it sound like you go find people. But he's a stream operator for Melee Every Day, right? That's yep. you. That's all you know all about that. If you sub to our channel, we got a Juna MO. It's SSBM Juna. Let's go. <laughs> He's a homie, and he's one of those people that's always doing work behind the scenes. You see these transitions, whether it's like stinger transitions. You know what's or funny is this isn't even his stage. He's yeah. actually working on a different yeah, stage. He's, on the other side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's working on the VG. There it is. Who saw Jason first? I I wonder. I lost. I, I definitely yeah. lost. <laughs> I, was, I was the slowest person. We to were spy both Jason. just riding Juna so hard. Yeah, I mean, somebody has to do it, man. It doesn't happen enough. But Echo Fox is Mewtwo King, MVG Zone. <laughs> I love Darth Mewtwo King, man. That, that, that hood and Mewtwo King just go together so well. Is it more iconic than The Rock? Because he's, he's showing us The Rock as soon as he came. So here's a question I have for you. Uh, people are talking about how sometimes the move is to go ahead and grow out your beard and then shave your hair, right? Like, so like the Jake's beard, where you kind of rock that as your look. Do you think that would look good on Mewtwo King? I think it would. Uh, you know, I don't think Jason's at that point where he has to make that decision, but if, if, it, if it trends that way, you know, like, you grow more facial hair to replace the lack of hair on the top of the head. Is that what you're getting at? It's the Gimmer move. Right. <laughs> the Gims always win shoutouts right. to we Gimmer. Got Astra headphones being worked on. Juno worked on these at Combo Breaker, so he's real familiar with this. We uh, we had the same sponsors, the same people working around mm -hmm. at Combo Breaker. Great event from the Midwest. And there we go. Probably going to have another one minute hand warmer. Maybe a little bit longer because there's someone notorious on the stage right we're, now. For we're not naming names. Long. But you know what's actually the same is that left team on player cam also this time is refusing the headphones. Oh, and yeah. I, and I got to say, this is one of the few venues, right? This is like Evo level commentary where the people in the crowd can actually hear us, Flambo. It's true, yeah. There is uh, speakers blasting us to everyone outside. So I'm going to try not to coach as best I can. Keep yeah, and I kind of feel general. sorry for the people in the stage <laughs> more than the people at home. <laughs> All you right, guys can though. mute me at home. They can't mute us out here. It's OK. In fact, I'm glad that you mentioned that because there's like how many different streams are like six or seven or eight different streams happening. What they did is that they had the crowd speakers kind of cycle in between all the different stream setups. So earlier today, you heard your Dragon Ball Fighters commentary blasting awesome. from the speakerphone. You heard your, your Killer Instinct or whatever the heck else they have here. You know, your there are so many games. Street Fighter. Exactly. There's so much stuff available here at CEO 2018. And even not inside this room, there's Jabali Land on the other side of the venue where it's like a giant arcade room, has DDR, has Puyo Puyo Tetris. So I know if, if Taffa was here, that'd be where he'd be at, right? He's got puzzle, rhythm games, Everything. old arcade games. Yeah, Jabali Land, definitely worth checking out. 
if you're anywhere a, in Florida, you gotta come. Def Jam Vendetta Fight for New York tournament. Like, I should be is commentating that. Game that. like 2008 or 2012. Def Jam? Oh no, dude, that's it, way younger. Than, I wasn't like. You're thinking 1998? No, I mean I was, I was like in fourth grade when that game came out. So, that, Flambo, what, what is fourth grade for you? Like, 2000. Three, four? What year did you graduate high school? Uh, 2014, but I repeated two years. All right. Well, that, that you didn't have to tell that. Well, I mean, that's just, I, you know, I, I ain't ashamed of it. Different walks of life. But speaking of different walks in life, we're going to go ahead and start this first game. Can I say Mewtwo King's already on the right side <laughs> mastering that ledge? I mean, he's throwing out the stanky leg as much as he can. Back air, back air, back air. And he's, it's working, right? Ooh, yeah, big one. Okay. It kind of leaves Plup to the mercy of the center stage, and right there, the grab up throw, finding that kill. Well, I mean, yeah, right? So when I, when I spoke to Plup earlier today, he said, I do not see myself losing. Uh, it's going to be a chill win. Verbatim is how he said it. So Plup is great with that confidence. He's got the confidence of a winner. Yeah, despite that, though, you know, they're still keeping it fairly even. We're going to see that stock disappear, and as I say that, the red team We'll go ahead and grab a little bit of a lead. Nothing too substantial, but could be the start of something bigger. Yeah, Me Too King's doing a good job of holding the stocks, and Plup is actually doing the best job of just finding the kill. You're going to get them at the right percents, and he's going to launch that seven-frame kill move. Yeah, and it's... Oh, he got the, the reverse blender. edge guarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Kings. crazy, man. Me Too King's still acting like a spider over there. Uh, what is that Street Fighter character, Vega? But the one who like thinks roses are beautiful and does like the yeah yeah he's yeah. always climbing the walls yep, and that's just diving. Him. That's Vega. Uh, Balrog in Japan, I believe, right? Is, is how it goes. Yeah, Mewtwo King doing a great job, just staying in that corner. Plup is still doing good, even though he's down to two socks. He's got great kills, good damage output. Okay, that's gonna be another stock on a maybe. And part of me is wondering why they actually uh, allowed this to go to Yoshi's for game on one. On the strike, yeah. It seems to heavily favor red team, but there's some small advantages. Peach has the bigger attacks. Uh, maybe they wipe out right. this game and go to a different set. And there we go. Quick uh, float cancel fair. Going to close out that stock. Yeah, the first stock from Yuta King. He's in no trouble at all. Hey, he is cooling. Look at it. Just run, charge those needles, throw out those backers whenever somebody threatens their space. And right there, you saw how suffocated HBox was feeling on that top platform. Yeah, they, they did a great job of finding that stock, and maybe he's been doing a good job of using that down smash against Plup. You can see they've been trying to just double team the best they can. Okay, gonna go ahead and get knocked down. That slide off the eye, so iconic of the current meta, right? Like, that yeah. is what you go for. It's so good when you slide off and have that instant action ability. Seven frame kill move. Every single time, just like that, down to his final stock. Maybe needs to eliminate four, so it's not looking likely. It's gonna be probably going to be a game for the red team. But just like that, he's able to pull out one. But here come the team combos and pressure. Yeah, maybe he did a good job holding through. Unfortunately, at the end there, he died vertically, so it's a little bit slower than that horizontal kill. I'm pretty sure HBox was spamming that right. life steal. And... We have to note that only top four of doubles is best three out of five. It oh, really? The, if, if, if the information's the same from the other game, right? So pretty positive. Last last match we just saw was a two out of three, right? KJH. Uh, KJH Ginger, and uh, yeah, Ginger. Yeah, that versus, was a two out of yeah. three. So this is also a two out of three. And this is pretty sure, yeah, if you can read his lips, he's like, really? He's like, oh, no. He's and there we go. It's a he's dose out of trace. <laughs> he's I'm not sorry. happy. <laughs> I mean, you can hear us, guys. Yeah, sorry. It yeah, is. It's, it's two out of three. My, my, my it, oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, you're going to have to put on your try-hard pants, Juan. <laughs> go ahead and shrugging it off. We got a couple emojis coming out from the left team. A little, a little shrug emoji. Yeah, the shrug emoji. The... Oh, man. Hands. Oh, wrong stage. Yeah, they Did they forget to ban because there. it's a two out of three? That might have been it, yeah. They might have been a little too excited to play. Forgot to ban the stage. But it's okay. I mean, after all, this is winners. You know, for the, Still got another chance. For the green team, a.k.a. Hungry Box, and maybe that game one, not the uh, the sexiest start, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And there's a small chance they might have struck to Yoshi's considering it was a three out of five. Mm, and just saying, let's get the stage out the, per out the way first, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, there you go. So we just got confirmation that they did not know it was the best of three. So this is one of the scenarios where having our voice being blasted out to the crowd is beneficial for the competitors because now they're able to think about that fact and readjust their game plans. We're going to go ahead and go to FD, aka Final Destination, for game two. And maybe in a one hungry box, Debbie Edma are going to try to do their best to get a win back. Yeah, we're going to have to see some great damage output. Last game, we saw a lot of camping from the edge on Mewtwo King, and that's a great strategy, in my opinion, for Yoshi's story. And the reason for that is there's so little ground space. Right. Right. But here, the space is so much larger, it's going to be a little harder for Mewtwo King to hold the ledge and to deal with Plup being so far away. But even with that said, he's going to go ahead and charge these needles every time he does charge, and that's like free 17-ish percent, assuming he's able to unleash them completely into his opponent. And even if he doesn't, Plup is right there waiting in the wings to see what he can do. Yeah, good counterattack options. And that 17 adds up. If you do two 17s, that's almost out of crouch hands right. for any character. Nice stocks taken. It was very surgical. Yeah, I mean, just watching these two play, it seems like they just have a game plan. They're going to execute it. You see Music King tries to trick up Hungrybox there by going for the ledge, but Hungrybox just waits and gets that edge guard. If he did go on stage, he could just jump rest, so there's nothing to risk there by holding on. And Music King right now trying to be extremely aggressive. He lost his jump, and that's a rest. Ooh, the DI of a god, though, going to be able to keep Music King alive there. Yeah, wasn't at a high percent either, really. Yeah, they both kind of just traded percent there. It was a little scary. Required the teammate help. Ooh, she Ow. went sideways. Nice DI. You know, the needle to get him out of that grab. Beautiful by Mewtwo King to save Plup there. Yeah, really well played. And something I'm noticing from the red team is that they're actually kind of fighting Peach in a great way where they do a poke and they wait for her response and then attack the response. Makes it very difficult for maybe to do anything, especially with, you know, Peach does have some areas that come up quickly, most notably that Nair. But when you're throwing out a hitbox, it doesn't matter how quick it is. If you're getting punished for it, you're getting punished for it. Exactly. And because Hungrybox is not always right next to him, he has a, Peach has to do a little bit more work right. on his self-sufficiency. Go ahead, Green throws team. More needles. It's pretty even stocks right now. Try to keep it close. This next opening could be a lot. Plop scared. Going to get intercepted by Hungry Box, but is able to manage to get hit by a reverse and land on stage. So now he has free reign, but maybe he's trying to pressure him down. As we see, Mewtwo can get sent off the stage. And Plup maybe actually doing a great job, except he dropped this edge guard right there. I was just saying, they were holding the stage so well, and, and this would be a, a trade in stocks. Damn, Plup died at 200% that last stock. So that's a, I mean, not Plup. Um, Mewtwo King, King died at 200%. So that's a very healthy stock. It's a nice Sheik stock. And maybe doing a really good job of finding those kills there, keeping the stocks. Green team up by only one. Jigglypuff is at kill percent, Whoa! and he finds the kill. And now this is looking a little difficult for the red team. They do have a bit that they can work with here, but they have to play a little more safe than they have. Yeah, they need to find those quick kills on Jigglypuff especially. Danger. Edge guard sequence. Mewtwo King's looking strong, but Hungrybox is stronger. There we go. King gonna die. And we see maybe just stall out as he waits for Hungrybox to come down with that invincibility. And now Plup has to do the 2v1. He is moving around with this box, but right there does not get the punish. Yeah, he managed to maneuver around two different characters at threats. And I gotta throw big props to maybe. Not only did he position well on the inside of the stage, but he also fended off a lot of 2v1s. Yeah, you have to say, like, you know, despite as we pointed out before, this is a best of three. It looks like Hungrybox and maybe were able to kind of just collect themselves and steal, well not steal, but correctly earn that game to in a manner that they were thinking about. They had themselves in the mindset, okay, this is now a best of three, we need to go into it. You, are you seeing what I'm seeing, Flambo? Did you see a character switch from Mewtwo King? Yeah. He's been exploring this. So, all right. <laughs> uh, funny story was, it's not really that him. funny. But <laughs> you according join to Plup, he told me today that uh, he played a game earlier, I believe it was against uh, Nun uh, in that team. Nun Absent Page? Nun Absent Page, that Mewtwo King did bring out his puff for one game, and they lost that game. And he was like, I don't know why Jason did it. And then he said, well, actually, I do know why Jason did it, because Jason is Jason, or whatever. And then that's what he told me verbatim, right? So looks like he's going for it again. We're going to see oh. that. What? Phantom Breast? No, it wasn't actually Phantom. Did he get, Phantom. get stopped? Uh, 
Mewtwo King actually intercepted it. Okay. Hit him with a Nair. I was gonna say, because I was like, wow, he went nowhere there, was still sleeping. It's all good. Now, he's actually playing Jigglypuff in a similar fashion to the Sheik, which is a disruptor, a, a stock tank type of character. And Jigglypuff has many strengths and differences from Sheik that, that yeah. apply in that area. Definitely one of those characters that shares parallels, especially in terms of just facing around your opponent and using your aerial mobility to kind of weave in and out of their attack zones. But Puff, arguably better than, at doing that than Sheik is. Puff is such a good character in the air. And one thing I just noticed right there in that last talk is that Fox has been really patient on that top platform. He's been trying to avoid all the threats on the ground. This has to do with Peach's inability to reach that top platform easily. Same with Jigglypuff. Wow, the frying pan comes out, tries to make an omelet really quick out of Jigglypuff, but it's not going to lead to much quick up air off the top. They're going to close that one out. And just great kill setups from Red Team. And you see Jason, that's Mewtwo King, still have four stocks. Yeah, he's, he's been doing a pretty good job of holding on for as long as he can. He's still only sitting at 90%, which is a lot for Puff, but could end up leading to a lot more. Yeah, and it's at that weird percentage where if you don't get a good hit, it's a straight hit. Right. Like you're scrapping, you're not killing, really. Especially since you have uh, Huff and Peach. It's going to be really hard unless you get like a, a sweet spot up smash with Peach or something. You're not really going to be able to get to scrap them again and again and again and again. And exactly. it wastes a lot of time. The green team's like explosive kill power or the, the initiation is just not quite as high. He needs a small read to get that kill on Mewtwo King. And you can see he's just avoiding so well. Oh, I appreciate that, uh, that attempt for that rest right there. Almost got the timing right there. It was a little bit too slow, but there we go. Pluff can go ahead and get that up smash. And that's the difference right there, right? They have a fox who can just up air the Puff or up smash the Peach or whatever, close out these stocks at reasonable percentages. Whereas they have to play so much more... Uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but... Set up based, More really. of attrition, right? Yeah. There's no way that Peach can maneuver the same way Fox can across the stage, get right. a vertical launcher instantly. The best you can do is like a Nair. There we go, coming down to the final three stocks of the green team while the red team is sitting at five and maybe he's at 154%. So one stray hit may be enough to end that stock. That from Peach sucked. Peach. Same with Jigs. Club looking very strong every time, just coming back quickly. Wow. I think the Firefox actually killed maybe off the top there. Well, it looks like. Plup is on his last stack now. Green team also on their last stocks. Yeah, Plup doesn't even care. He can go ahead and lose the stock if he wants to. Does have a bit of a bank to sit on in Mewtwo King stocks right there. So yeah, Mewtwo King's kind of been like the uh, the Scrooge on Christmas. He's not right. giving out <laughs> any of his savings. He's not sharing at all. Scrooge McDuck. He's he's having a great time. Yeah. Fortunately, a lot of the time the pacing was just in Red Team's favor. Where if Green Team ever got split up and Fox found them. It was just lethal damage all the time. Right. And there we go. They don't even really try to bring back those five stocks. Let's go ahead. A parasol off the side right there. They admit it's a game well played. We'll see you maybe in losers or something. But unfortunately, they will not be able to continue on in the winner's side. But we will be seeing more of Mewtwo King and Plup later on. Yep. They're going to advance to winner's finals and face the awaiting team, Team Balance, which is Ginger yes. and KGH. It's going to be a promising match. I, I, big shout outs to Maybe and Hungrybox on the FD game for finding that balance and you know, maneuvering around the Sheik gameplay. We're going to have to see if there's ever going to be an answer for the Puff Fox, because mm. Mewtwo King, even not being a Puff main, he's, he's handling the character, I, I believe, very well in teams. He's, he's poking when he needs to, stock right. taking. Um, it's going to be so dangerous, dangerous once he starts resting, right? Right. And it's also, you know, you can learn how to play a character in singles, but that doesn't mean that's how you play the character in doubles, right? So even, let's say, if Mewtwo King whips out his puff in singles, which, I mean, he's an amazing player in his own right. Like, if he did whip out his puff, I'm sure it would do monstrous damage to a bracket. Um, he is just phenomenal in doing what he does in teams. It doesn't matter what the character is, and I think Puff really accentuates what he's good at. Yeah, it's almost like a, a toolkit or like a, another tool, a brush set, right? Right. Where like, Mewtwo King is just the type to do this st style of play, which is aggressive edge game, and he's expressing himself in another character, right? And despite you know how long he's been doing that, right? He's been at it for years. No one does it as good as he does. Still. Yeah, he's great at still. playing a bunch of different characters and you know, big shout outs to him playing a bunch of different games as well, right? One of the few smashers that is really talented at the top right. level in many Smash games. 
And speaking of which, definitely probably going to be out here playing Smush or SSBU. Uh, speaking of which here, their ultimate is on demo right here. The lines are long, so if you guys are interested, if you are watching the stream at home, if you're at the event and you're tuckered out, plan ahead yeah. <laughs> to, to get to this, this demo because everyone wants to play it. It looks really great. No, everyone has been telling me great things about it, um, and I've only seen a line. <laughs> yeah, I I've, I've haven't tried tackling that line yet, but I did find out I think it opens at like 9-ish or 8 is tomorrow it? in the morning. Um, it's already closed for today. They closed at 7. we got to so wake up bright and early. I'm going to try to dash really early on try to maybe get a second a time in you know when you're on like those six flags right, right. <laughs> and you're just like yeah let me back on one more time man and then you kind of let it be but super smash bros ultimate is here at ceo 2018 sponsored by nintendo they're doing the lord's work here getting us a chance to get our hands on the game and feel it out before the uh release i believe in december it I is think around the sixth or something like that so that sounds right it, it's really exciting to to really see them really showed this much love because obviously they showed the demo at E3, but now it's at an event for lots of people to see. This is the general public. You get to get your hands on and play it. And what's exciting to me was last year we saw Nintendo here at CEO for the first time. Right. They're showing off arms and just really happy to show off the Switch to the loyal Nintendo fans. And look how far we've come, right? Yeah, speaking of the Switch, the Switch is definitely probably, I don't know if it's the best, but in a long time in terms of selling system. systems that Nintendo has done, like the Wii U was a flop, like a complete flop. There's there's no tiptoeing around that in comparison to the sales that the Switch has had. I'm pretty sure what was the stat is like the Switch sold out um, uh, more units in their first week than the Wii U in its lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Which is tragic, but I mean, for good reason, right? You can bring it anywhere. For example, um, plane rides. a lot of people flew into Orlando and then took uh, hour and a half shuttle bus from Orlando Airport down to the Daytona Ocean Center, which is where we are at right now. Um, and sitting on that ride, you can go ahead, whip out your Switch, play some Mario Tennis Aces or whatever, and just make that ride go like a blink of an eye. Man, I want to try out Mario 